Now let's uh, welcome our next storyteller. Uh, please give it up for Andy Burt. All right, I am the aforementioned Andy Burt. Um, this is my first time at one of these storytelling events, but don't feel sad for me because um, this story I'm about to tell is entrenched in my brain. That's a nice thing about trauma, is that you never forget. Um, so, uh, um, I grew up in the affluent Down River community of Winda. For a long time, I thought the word affluent meant a place where a lot of people get the flu. So in that regard, Wyandotte is the most affluent city <laughs> as far as the real meaning of this guy. <laughs> the date um, of the story was uh, June 14th, 1994. I was 13 years old. Um, oh, I, I forgot there's a theme. The theme is first. This story is about my first heartbreak. Not the romantic kind, although that would come later. And then it would happen again and again and again and again until the day I die. I'm sure that's okay. Make for another good story. <laughs> um, so, I should mention my, my dad was a barber. Um, he still is a barber, actually. He's 42 years as a barber, which is nuts. Um, but anyway, so he's one of these old timey barbers where he's friends with all of his customers so a lot of times the customer just kind of swindle him and give him like bull crap gifts instead of just paying him money which has caused problems in his marriage and uh as a father i always call him the breadwinner because he literally sometimes his customers will pay him fancy bread um, to make a point uh, one time this is a little bit later i was probably like, 23 or something um, he came home and he's like, hey Andy, don't tell your mom, but a customer, customer gave me this, and it was a Coke bottle that had Clay Aiken and Ruben Stoddard on it. <laughs> he's like, you ever see this? It's from that show, Teen Idol. And I'm like, Dad, it says American Idol. It's not Teen Idol. These men are in their 20s, and they're fabulous entertainers. Um, most of your dads probably have pretty nice 401ks at this point. <laughs> My dad does not. He has a collection of uh, collectible Coke bottles, <laughs> which is nice. But I looked it up on eBay. It's actually worth uh, $200 million. So kind of a <laughs> Good job, Dad. Anyway, so back to uh, June 14th. Actually, uh, so this is like 1992. I should set the story up a little bit. Um, so one time, so one day he comes home from work and his customer paid him with a dog. He paid, he, here's this dog, and this dog, and he's like, hey, I guess we have a dog. And um, it, this dog looked, you ever see like those homeless dogs in like Oliver and Company or Lady the Tramp? You know how they always have like that one homeless dog? And he's got like that weird beard. You know what I'm talking about? My mom would be like, he looks like a rat. Get him out of here, he looks like a rat. He didn't, no one in my family liked him. My dad's like, you're right, we should, I should probably take him back. But I was like, no, I love him. Um, I named him Bo because that was the time of Bo Jackson. Um, Bo knows baseball. Bo knows basketball. Bo knows eating our furniture and shitting on the floor. Um, I had to change his name because um, you would say no, and he couldn't differentiate no from Bo, which was his name. So we changed it to Mike, who was my second favorite Ninja Turtle. <laughs> My first favorite Ninja Turtle was Donatello, but that was a secret because my friends would think I was a nerd if I told them <laughs> Donatello was my favorite. Looking back as an adult, I'm like, why the hell Donatello? I don't even like science or math. <laughs> anyway, um, so Mike, Mike and I, he really was my only true friend for a while. It was that weird period of uh, 12 to, you know, 11 to 13 where boys just don't have friends unless they're assholes. Um, so anyway, so he was my, my really my only friend. Um, I remember one time um, he was eating the furniture and shitting on the floor as usual. My dad got pissed and, and he hit him with a newspaper, he spanked his butt. 
and I was so sad and I was crying, even though I wasn't getting spanked with a newspaper that night. But, um, <laughs> but uh, old Mike, he uh, came up to me and he started licking my tears away, and it was just the sweetest goodbye. <laughs> even though his ass had to hurt pretty bad. But, um, so anyway, June 14, 1994. Um, it's one of the first days of summer break. Um, my parents are at work, my, my, it's me and my sister. My sister at this point would have been 16, and she sucked. <laughs> she, she totally sucked. Um, I don't think she's here, I think she always, she always does that thing where she like, puts going on Facebook invites that doesn't actually work. So, I think I'm in the clear here. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, so, uh, she was out suntanning, and it was like 11 a.m., and I just found out that Full House was in syndication. I'm like, oh my god, I have to tell Jenny. So I run out, like, Jenny, Full House is on. She's like, I don't care. She's two years old. And I'm like, why is the gate open and where's Mike? So I look and Mike, my dog, is nowhere to be found. Um, and then anyway, I, she's like, I don't know, whatever. So um, I come to find out, like, she revealed this to me a couple years ago, is that she uh, left that gate open on purpose, but I didn't know that at the time. That's, what? She sucks. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so I go out running, looking for that dog. Um, I get my bike, um, just looking everywhere that he normally would be. He normally would run up and he would just, like, kind of stay at the end of the block because he wouldn't know where to go. Um, this time I couldn't find him. And... Anyway, so my mom comes home from work, and I have her drive me around. I can't find him anywhere. Um, it's about 8 o'clock, and it's a Friday night. And I'm like, I just want to go home and watch TGIF. Family Matters was the 8 p.m. time slot. At that point, Full House had moved to Tuesday. At <laughs> <laughs> um, so I turn on the, uh, the ABC, and Family Matters is not on because uh, apparently O.J. Simpson decided to get in a Bronco. And, uh, <laughs> Leave from the police at a very slow pace. <laughs> so I'm just this devastated child. All I want to do is watch Family Matters because I can't find my dog. And uh, OJ is uh, eluding the police. And I have to watch it. So I change it. I'm like, well, the NBA Finals is on. I change it to Channel 4. Um, OJ is on that one. The Stanley Cup Finals were on. Oh, again, OJ. I better wrap this up before you guys are worried about what happened to my dog. <laughs> so, okay, so anyway, so a week later, um, in the uh, Down River News Herald, there's an ad that says, hey, found dog. And my parents were like, you know what, maybe don't go get that dog. And I was like, oh, I was like F you, this is, he's my only friend, blah, blah, blah. So I walked my ass down, like, across the city. Um, I, they, the people have um, the dog on the porch. And they're like, here he is. And I'm like, ah, it's, it's not my dog. <laughs> and um, I knew it because, not I mean because I know what my dog looks like, but my dog has like a white uh, cross. My dad always said that was because he was a Christian, which was nice. <laughs> I said my dog gave to Jesus. Um, but they're like, are you sure it has this like white? I'm like, it's not my dog, man. You know your dog. So anyway, so. Um, if any, long story short, um, I never found my dog. Um, was, he would be 26 now. So, uh, in dog years, that would... Oh, fuck, man, he's dead. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the stories. Okay.